Welcome to Electrified, it's your host Dylan Loomis. Quick shout out to my newest patrons, Richard L, SB Kimmy J, and Beatles for Sale. Thank you all for choosing to support the channel. First of all, happy Friday, happy AI day. We're gonna go very quickly today so you can get the news that you need and then move on to your Friday night plans as you prepare for the event tonight. First up, it looks like Reuters got their hands on some internal Tesla documents that are telling us the Model Y in three production is set to see a sharp increase in production in quarter four. This forecast sets an ambitious target to produce almost 495,000 Model Y in threes in the fourth quarter of this year. So if we add in Model S and X, which over the first two quarters of this year have been averaging about 15,000 per quarter, that would put us in the ballpark of a potential delivery figure in quarter four of 510,000 if these reports are accurate. Stopping for a second, Troy's latest Q4 estimate was 460,000. Of course, this was before this report from Reuters. Point being, this would indeed be a significant increase. According to this forecast, it would put Tesla on track for 2.1 million EVs for the full year of 2023. Now, if that were to happen for some context, including gas powered sales, this would put Tesla larger than Audi, and closing in on BMW's figure of 2.5 million cars in 2021. Honestly, I'm not exactly sure what to make of this article. Here they're saying Austin would jump to almost 101,000 by the end of the third quarter next year. And then for Berlin, the equivalent gain would be from 51,000 next quarter, talking about quarter four this year, to almost 90,000 by the quarter ending September 2023 or Q3. Again, they're saying 51,000 out of Giga Berlin in Q4. And Troy's last public update had Berlin at almost half of that coming in at 27,500. So again, if Tesla delivers around 365,000 for quarter three, they would need to do 570,000 in Q4 to hit 1.5 million for the year. This Reuters report would be telling us they have a shot at around 510,000 at least right now. Honestly though, 50% growth this year with all of the macro headwind challenges and ramping two brand new factories with a ton of technology is a huge feat. Most importantly, if Q4 did produce around 495,000 just Model 3 and Y, you can see what kind of jump that would really be. Maybe plug in what, 350,000 here for quarter three. And yes, I just conflated production and deliveries because they're close enough for you to get the picture. So it's at this point, I can sense you're wondering, Dylan, where can I get that new merch? Well, thank you for noticing, but I'm sad to tell you it's exclusive. Next up, we have solar panels piling up in warehouses in Europe because there aren't enough people to get them installed. Despite the pileup, Europe is still set to install a record amount of solar capacity this year. For some people though, in Belgium and Germany, panels ordered now might not get installed before March. As I was reading this article, I thought to myself, we need to start training people to do this. And luckily the next paragraph said a Spanish company is doing exactly that. And further, we still have logistical challenges as the shortage of computer chips means some panels are missing the inverters needed to process electricity. Here we have New York adopting California's new rule that by 2035, all new car sales in the state will have to be either full electric or plug-in hybrid. The chair of the California Air Resources Board said some states are ready right now to adopt these new rules, while others will get more comfortable as the models continue to roll out. Next up from Drive Tesla Canada, you may have seen this if you've been paying attention a few months back, but this new $500 million program from the Canadian Infrastructure Bank for 50,000 public EV charging stations over the next two to three years is set to roll out. In the coming days, we should get more information on how this will work. Next up, we have the Foshini Group, which is a South African retail clothing company buying 307 Tesla Powerwalls to deal with load shedding. Since we're trying to go quickly today, just think of load shedding as ongoing nationwide rolling blackouts. The company that owns Foshini said this purchase will make it the largest South African client of Tesla's Powerwall. Thought that was good to set the stage for this, Tesla saying Powerwall for the win. So after Hurricane Ian rips through this part of Florida, Kelly Roofing posted Tesla's solar roof stood up to winds of 155 and a 10 foot storm surge 
Powerwall was underwater for hours and is still working perfectly. So it's great to see the durability of the Powerwall and the solar roof. They didn't say exactly what part of Florida this was in. And honestly though, I can't look at these pictures without saying to anybody that was impacted, I love you, keep your head up. There are brighter days ahead. We're praying for y'all. Next up from the information, we have Tesla now making cash, not stock, the default for many employees compensation awards. However, they are still giving employees the option if they want to choose stock for these awards, they can still do so. It's just now the default will be cash. And unless something has changed, Tesla still has its employee stock purchase program that employees can buy Tesla stock at a discount. And as a shareholder, of course, this is less dilutive if less people elect taking stock as compensation. But again, employees will still be able to receive stock awards instead of cash grants if they prefer. Here we have a quick macro session. This teal line at the bottom is the United States inflation rate dating back to the 1970s. On the top, this blue line is going to be the United States federal funds rate currently at 3.25. The five vertical yellow lines are just the last five times the inflation rate has eclipsed 5%. And the horizontal yellow lines are just showing you the 5% benchmark for both of these charts. I just want to show you the last four times inflation has eclipsed 5%. The federal funds rate has actually exceeded the inflation rate number before inflation actually came down. And unless I explicitly say I'm predicting something, I never am, I'm just showing you the data. Here you go, back in 1975, inflation hit about 12%. Right before that, the federal funds rate reached 12 to 13%. The next time, back in 1980, inflation hit about 13%, it's tough to see. Right before that, the federal funds rate went all the way up to around 19%, again, exceeding the inflation rate. In 1990, the inflation rate hit around 6%, and just before that, the federal funds rate reached 9%. In 2008, inflation hit about 5%, and shortly before that, the federal funds rate reached 5%, at least on par. So the last four times inflation went over 5%, the federal funds rate has had to go to that level or above before inflation actually came down. And fast forward to today, we know the inflation rate is around 8.5%, and the federal funds rate now is only at 3.25%. So to everyone saying the Fed's going to pivot and reduce interest rates this year, I would say maybe, but historically that seems unlikely. Shifting back to EVs, Tesla is now launching the track pack for the Model 3 in Europe for the first time, just shy of 6,000 euros. Next up, in a Tesla stock note from Deutsche Bank, they have a price target of $400, and I just wanna highlight one thing. They say, as for 2023, our recent deep dive suggests Tesla has considerable underappreciated margin improvement potential next year by shifting production mix to cost of goods sold favorable regions. Essentially any region compared to Fremont is going to be favorable. And they say, we continue to view Tesla as one of the most attractive stories in the auto sector thanks to pricing power, superior cost structure, strong execution, and having secured supply. Personally, I would remove this part about in the auto sector. Here we have Toyota again saying all of these new EV targets are going to be hard to achieve. The CEO of Toyota told dealers BEVs are just going to take longer to become mainstream than the media would like us to believe. Akio Toyota said playing to win means playing with all the cards in the deck, not just a select few. So that's our strategy and we're sticking to it. Toyota still gonna make ICE vehicles, some plug-in hybrids, some BEVs, probably some fuel cell stuff. And we have this Toyota dealer saying, you can't make a living just selling EVs. And I said I wanted to keep it brief for everybody today. So to wrap it up on Twitter, Tesla shared this teaser video of some robotic hands opening into the shape of a heart. In response to that video, Elon said the hands of Optimus, that is not CGI. And of course, there will be a live stream of this event on Tesla's YouTube channel. I'll include a link below, set to begin at 9.15 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And lastly, I just wanna say, no matter what happens or doesn't happen tonight, I hope you all can just sit back, relax, and genuinely enjoy getting to watch this Tesla story unfold. So again, no matter what happens tonight, next week Tesla is still going to keep innovating, pushing forward, and dominating. So let's just sit back, relax, and enjoy the ride. Cheers.
It's actually amino energy in this cup if anybody was wondering, but hope you all have a wonderful weekend. Enjoy the event. Please like the video if you did. And a huge thank you to all of my Patreon supporters.